what are the best treatments for your scoliosis based upon your age. When it comes to the categorization of scoliosis, the first category is by age of patient, whether the patient is an infant or an, an older adult. So when it comes to scoliosis treatment, you have to really consider the age of the patient when you consider what kind of treatment options you're gonna provide for a patient. When it comes to the goals of scoliosis treatment, we know there's some common goals. First goal, obviously, is to reduce the scoliosis. Uh, two is to prevent any further progression because we know scoliosis to be a progressive problem in really any stage of life. Uh, if the scoliosis is causing any type of functional issues or any kind of pain, we, of course, we want to improve function and reduce pain. And then, of course, we want long-term stabilization because we know scoliosis can progress slowly as an adult. Very clearly that once curves break 25 degrees, the likelihood of scoliosis will progress without treatment is very high, no matter what stage of life you're in, adolescent, juvenile, young adult, older adult. So we have to start dealing with how we want to treat and reduce these, these curves once we start breaking 25 de degrees because we know more than likely curve progression is going to happen. When we look at our first group, meaning infantile scoliosis, infantile scoliosis has its own unique challenges because you're dealing with somebody who can't perform any type of exercises on their own. So we only have really two modes of treatment at this point, and this is scoliosis-specific therapy, meaning therapy that's passively induced into the spine to help make the spine more flexible so it can help respond to the second treatment that we want to use, which is scoliosis bracing. And normally it's going to be corrective bracing. In an infantile case, you can't just hold the scoliosis, meaning if you have a 40 degree curve, you're trying to just to hold it and you're not actively trying to reduce the scoliosis, the likelihood of you holding this curve at 40 and just holding it through their entire juvenile and adolescent stage, you're more likely to get a curve that's going to progress and the patient's going to end up having surgery. So in an infantile case, one of my requirements is that I would have to see reduction in this scoliosis. I want the curve to reduce and I want it to reduce significantly. So therefore, if I, ha I can beat this time, this next 10 or, or 12 or 15 years that it could be, that the curve has risk of progression. This concept of trying to reduce the curve to get ahead of what's going to happen is also true for my next group, which is something called juvenile scoliosis or children. This is between the age of three and roughly about 10 years of age. In this group, we normally see the best results long term because the curves are relatively flexible. In most cases, the curves are a little bit smaller, meaning they're more like 25, 30 degrees. And this is where most orthopedic approaches or traditional approaches would just say, watch it because the curve isn't big enough yet, or they say they're too young, they're not going to comply with treatment. And if all we're doing is providing you a brace that's going to try to slow down progression, you would have would just say, let's just wait for it to worsen and then we'll try taking care of it at that point. But at this stage is where I tend to see the highest level of improvement. Depending on the patient, we can normally use all our methods here. We can use bracing, we can use therapy, we can use exercise, we can use self-corrective exercise, we can use chiropractic care, we can use all our methods here to get the very best reduction. Of course, a four or five-year-old may not be able to do exercises as well as a seven or eight-year-old, but each program will be customized for that patient based upon what they can do and can't do. But the goal, like I said, with infantile scoliosis, we must receive reduction. We don't want to just hold the curve here. We want to reduce it as much as we can, knowing that we have a long time that this curve has at, at risk for, for progression. So most of my children or juvenile cases, they'll be in full-time treatment, and then we'll be able to wean them down to part-time treatment and monitoring when the curve is reduced. And then we wait for adolescent stage and see if we have to reinitiate treatment if the curve were to progress. But we've had some juvenile cases that we've reduced them and their curve has never progressed. And so therefore, we've reduced the risk, reduced the risk of progression. They never progressed and they move on to adolescent stage without any treatment. Some we need to reinitiate treatment depending upon the patient. When it comes to treating teenagers, these are when most people think of scoliosis progression, meaning a, an adolescent, you know, somebody 12, 13, 14, 15 years of age. This is when scoliosis goes through its most rapid progression. For girls, it's between 11 and 12. For boys, it's between you know 13 and 14, because they go through puberty at different stages. Girls go through puberty a little bit younger, 
boys go through puberty a little bit older. During this teenage years is when curves can progress very, very quickly and they go out of control, meaning they can progress rapidly. What's rapid progression? The fastest progression I've ever seen in patients has been 10 degrees a month. I've seen curves progress 40 degrees in four months, 60 degrees in six months. Um, and I'm not even sure if that's linear, meaning it could have progressed faster in a shorter term if we were to evaluate it in, that, in, in the middle there. But we can see very rapid progression. So in this case, when you're diagnosed with scoliosis, and let's say the curve is less than 25 degrees, and you're in this critical year, say 11 or 12 years of age, and you're a female, and they say, come back in six months, you can walk out that uh, doctor's office with a curve under 25 degrees, start going through a growth spurt the very next day, and your curve can be bigger than 40 degrees in less than two or three months. And when you, by the time you go back, you've missed that window in which traditional treatment would treat you, meaning 25 and 40, and now you go from non-treatment to a surgical recommendation between one evaluation and the next. So in, in teenagers, we recommend treating as soon as you can because the sooner you find it and the sooner you reduce it, the less likely you are to progress to become a surgical level. Unfortunately, we see many patients that are surgical levels and our goal is to try to reduce them outside of those surgical levels. And again, we use all our treatment options. We use therapy, we use intensive care, we use our corrective bracing, we use um, rehabilitation, home exercises, home therapy, home rehab. We use everything we have in order to get the very rapid, the most rapid and most aggressive reduction possible in teenagers. Acting quickly on the treatment of scoliosis in, ch in teenagers and children is very important because we know the curves are progressing rapidly. However, when it comes to treating an adult with scoliosis, this isn't true because curves aren't progressing rapidly at this point. They're progressing slowly because of gravity over time. Now, interesting, most adults will start to feel pain as a result of scoliosis, and the classic onset is typically about 35 to 40 years of age. They start feeling um, their, their little pains that they've been dealing with become more achy and more, more issue, they cause more issues and more debilitating pain. So the number one thing they're looking for is pain relief. And by, when trying to get pain relief, they're normally looking for alternative options like massage, and they start doing things that are more like soft tissue based thinking that if they can help with the muscles because they're thinking, I had scoliosis my whole life, I didn't have pain when I was a child, I have pain now, it's gotta be something outside of my scoliosis. But what they're not understanding is that their curve has progressed. So you can see five or 10 degrees progression as an adult and experience a tremendous amount of pain from it, or progress 50 degrees as a child and feel nothing, so, uh, no pain as a result of it. So the progression as an adult is painful, so the number one goal is to reduce their pain. Our goal is still to reduce the curve, but we have to reduce it a, a little bit more controlled than we do as an adult. So we use all our program, meaning our intensive care, our home therapy, home rehab, corrective bracing, therapy, rehabilitation, but we do it in a customized way for the flexibility of that adult patient. Just like kids can vary, adults can vary on their flexibility and their ability to tolerate the treatment. So we have to assess the flexibility of the spine and match a program that's aggressive enough to reduce their curve, but not so over aggressive that they can't tolerate it. So it's that experience and that blend that get the very best results. And our last group is treating, treating patients that are 60 years and older. Elderly patients normally tend to experience lots of limitations as a result of their scoliosis because as the scoliosis progresses, not only does it get bigger, but it starts to affect many systems of their body and it starts to affect, affect their ability to stand and walk and becoming mobile. And once we know patients lose the ability to, to walk and be, and, have, and be mobile, stand on their own, we know that that directly can affect life expectancy. So when we look at scoliosis in an elderly person that we see progressing, I take it very seriously because we have to, first of all, stop the progression. And that's the number one goal when it comes to elderly patients because their curves we know are just gonna progress and they're gonna progress rapidly if they're already occurring. Curves in this stage can start progressing again 10, 15 degrees a year. So you start seeing some rapid progression this stage and bodies can start to change relatively quickly. Pain limitations can start to change relatively quickly. Spinal degeneration can start uh, happening relatively fast. And the unfortunate scenario is because they start progressing fast and they're in this elderly stage, they start going you know, to orthopedists and they say, okay, well, maybe you could do surgery. Well, surgery for elderly patients is very difficult. The, the likelihood of them responding to a surgical 
uh, scoliosis fusion and, and the 60 plus range is very poor. And most surgeons don't even wanna do it in most cases because the likelihood of them coming out better is very, very unlikely. So they're like stuck. Now my curve is worsened. It's gotten to the point where surgery is warranted, but I've now I'm in such a condition that I can't even have surgery, so what do we do? So our first goal is to stop progression. And again, we use our all our modes of treatment, but in a more customized manner to match the functional ability of this patient. So we use our therapy or rehab intensive program, even corrective bracing in elderly patients. But the goal is more long-term stability with minimal reduction. We're not only not getting massive reductions in this stage, but we are getting some. And sometimes some can have a great effect on this person's ability to function and live the remaining years of their life because we're looking for quality time at this point. So when it comes to scoliosis treatment, where do you first get started? First thing you do is you reach out and find out Okay, if I'm in one of these categories, which is the best option for your reduction? We examine your unique case based upon your age, size of curve, your flexibility of your spine and how functional you are, and then we design a treatment plan that's gonna use all our modalities, if possible, to best fit your, your results and your program in terms of what we're trying to achieve. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.